Okay, so we just in the last video finished all the hard work within vector.com, a freeware. We turned off our sketch, though it's still encoded in the image. We made every vector shape solid black. We checked everything to make sure it was really clean. And there's one final step that I often do in my vector programs. Ah. I accidentally swiped to one side and got to. Got it to move on to a new file. So I just need to open up the, the old one, but luckily it all it all saves. And I saved it as an SVG here that I could load. But there's one last step that I do usually in a vector program to help make sure I can spot any uh, potential problems. So the most common problem when making a black logo out of a vector is that you have little paths turned on that you're not aware of, and especially that you have any paths turned on that are not white. I'm sorry, that are not black, you know, that are white shapes or gray shapes or something that, that's not exactly what you intended. So what I do is at the very end, I'll create, usually I'll use a rounded rectangle because I think it's stylish, but I'll create a background shape of some color. So I'll just use the default color that it gave me. Then I'll move that, remember it's like paper cutouts, down below everything else. So grab it and drag it just like you do layers within Photoshop. And by doing that, I can see if there's accidentally any white shape or other color shape floating out there, mostly white shapes and gray shapes, and that everything looks uniform. And then, of course, just like my sketch, I turn that off before outputting it as an SVG. So once I've saved it as an SVG, I have it here. Remember, you can test it in a web browser, and you can zoom in as much as the web browser allows, and everything should look perfectly clear, because this is a scalable vector graphic. Now, with that scalable vector graphic, you might see some little things you want to change. I'm not sure if I want to change it, but I see something that can be worked with. And that is the top lip of the eyeglasses here. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit, not a whole lot. So there's a little bit more thickness to those glasses. And sometimes you won't catch little things like that until you preview it and look around. So that way it doesn't look like my glasses are getting kind of shrunken by my eye. Now it's always kind of a push and pull, but I think I like that, but it might also mean that this has to drop a tiny bit in my design. Because it's not just about the marks you make, it's about the spaces around them as well. So just basics of, of graphic design, two-dimensional design. Okay, now I am happy with it. And I will export it for the last time as an SVG and I will update it for the last time as a black shape vector. So all these little tweaks at the end can take as long as some of the big steps at the beginning.
And now this new SVG that when I preview it, looks perfect in every regard, at every scale, in every way I can make it. Or just indicates that I'm, I'm fed up trying anymore, right? And I'm now going to, to live with it. We take that and we move to a raster file. So we change, we can exit vector.com and we can go back to our raster program, photop.com, and we say file new. We're going to create a new pixel space. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it SP21. Okay, so I named it Spring 2021 Assignment 6. Use my first name, Carl, and then called it Vector Logo. Now, it's a raster program. And I'm creating the space where I'll keep my vector. So I'm already thinking, how am I going to print this out? So I'm going to make it 8 by 10 inches, kind of a, a standard small print size, at 300 pixels per inch. I know it says DPI, but it really means pixels per inch. And with the background that is white, say create. This gives me the pixel space. Now I will take my SVG, my scalable vector graphic, drag and drop it into the raster program, and it comes in as a smart object, just like when we were compositing. And then I can transform it, hold down shift so it doesn't distort, and pretend that what I'm looking at is a black mat around an 8 by 10 printout, and I get to grow and organize my vector to look as good as it can in that space. Then hit return. So this, if I printed it out, this is how it would look. And this would be the black frame or the black mat around it. Because it is a smart layer, it is protected. That smart object layer cannot be um, edited unless it's first rasterized, but it can be transformed, right? What's great about that is no matter what resolution I use that smart object on, because it's a vector, it will automatically rasterize to whatever that format is. So this is the best it can possibly look at 8 by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. If I make it 30 by 40 inches, which I don't recommend because that's a whole lot of extra memory. But if I make it 30 by 40, or close to that, so I don't want to distort it. Because I have it as a smart object layer, it's going to take a little while, that is coming from a vector file, it will make it perfectly clean at that much, much larger size, which is, I think it's called a, a double sheet poster format. So now the pixels are defining that shape in so much more detail than they are at eight by 10. And I didn't have to change anything because that vector file is scalable. It doesn't, dis it doesn't lose quality at its different sizes. So I just hit Command Z, or I can go in my history to before I changed the image size, right? Come on. Okay. So. What do I do? You open a new format in a raster program, PhotoP or Photoshop. You make it 8 inches wide, 10 inches tall by 300 pixels per inch. Then you drag your vector file, an SVG if you're saving it from vector, on and it will come in as a smart object. 
just like this. Then you transform it, you know, just drag from the corner holding down shift to be the, the size you want on that background. And now we are ready to make it more versatile as just a black shape logo. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna do Command J and duplicate the background twice. The background on top, I'm gonna to say edit fill with black at 100%. The background underneath that, I'm going to say edit fill with 50% gray or gray at 100%. So you notice that the our logo looks great on white, it looks good on middle gray, it disappears completely on black, even though it's there. So what can we do? We wanna double click on the layer, you know, away from the name, so that we get layer styles. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a white offset. A white offset will help it to show up on dark backgrounds. So my logo has a lot of really clean edges. So I'm gonna play with an outer glow offset. And I want all of your offsets just to be layer style effects. They're not painted, they're outputted from the vector. That way we don't ever have to rasterize it. And I want them to be solid white, all of your offsets for your black and white shaped logo. But you can play with all these settings. You can play with how opaque the white is. You can play with how noisy it is. That's the grainy pattern. You can play with how big it is. That's the spread and the size, how soft edged it is. I think I want mine to be pretty soft edged. And you can play with how um, even it is, that's the jitter, or how kind of uneven. Yeah, I like that. So that's outer glow. That's one type of offset. And then you can see that they're all linked to the layer in your Photoshop file underneath effects. So outer glow, but I can add more effects or a different type. So another type is to do a drop shadow. This is a directional use and I'm gonna make my drop shadow white at 100%. The hex is FFFFF for the hex code. And then I can play with the spread, the size, the distance, but it's directional, I can even change the angle, right? To help my image show up. Or I could layer the two together so I can have a drop shadow that's white and an outer glow in other parts. Thirdly, I can just do, if I don't like kind of the softness of the outer glow, or the drop shadow, I can just use a stroke. So a stroke is a lot like a border in vector, where it will just work on the outside of my shapes and give me a little border. I can set the stroke to be any color I want, but I want you to use solid white, hex F, 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 F. And you can make that stroke any size you want, And you can set the stroke to be outside of your given shapes, like that, inside of your given shapes, which I think looks best for my logo, or splitting the difference on the outside and the inside. And that looks pretty good for my logo too, except it gets a little tight, especially in the glasses. So you have all these different offset strategies to help it show up on dark backgrounds. And to get the most versatile 